Now we are told here that this new Pharaoh that arose, he said unto the people, and this is verse 9, Behold, the people of the children of Israel are more and mightier than we. Come on, let us deal wisely. Well, his idea of dealing wisely with them is the wisdom of the world. And he says, lest they multiply, and it come to pass that when there falleth out any war, they join also unto our enemies and fight against us, and so get them up out of the land. That was a possibility, of course, and they did present a real problem, I'm sure, to this Pharaoh. But he's using worldly wisdom to solve it. The simple matter would be to let them go, and that would solve it. But he wants them as slaves, of course. We are told here at verse 11, "...therefore they did set over them taskmasters to afflict them with their burdens, and they built for Pharaoh treasure cities, Python and Ramesses." That was something that reveals now that they were those that were really doing the hard work. Actually, some have thought that they had something to do with the building of the pyramids. Well, I think the pyramids probably were there long before this. But certainly the city of Ramesses has been excavated. And I remember Dr. Kyle brought to class one day a brick that had been taken out of that city. The interesting thing, a brick that had been made without straw. And it showed evidence of it. Then another brick that had evidence it was made with straw. So that the record that's given here is quite an accurate record but it'd be accurate if they'd never found any bricks at all. The bricks here are not thrown at the Bible. However, they rather confirm it, and that, of course, makes it interesting. They did build the cities of Ramesses. Now we're told, but the more they afflicted them, they multiplied and grew, and they were grieved because of the children of Israel. Now they're put in a pretty hard spot, as you can see, down here in the land of Egypt. And this is exactly what God had told Abraham would happen. Now, back in the 15th of Genesis, verse 13, God had said, He said unto Abram, Know of a surety that thy seed shall be a stranger in a land that's not theirs, and they shall serve them, and they shall afflict them 400 years. Now, three things. They are to be a stranger in a strange land, and they are there to be servants, that is, slaves and they shall afflict them. So that these three things are already fulfilled right here, and we're just about a dozen verses in the first chapter here. Now we're told, though, the more they afflicted them, the more they multiplied and grew. Verse 13, And the Egyptians made the children of Israel to serve with rigor, and they made their lives bitter with hard bondage, in mortar, and in brick, and in all manner of service in the field. All their service, wherein they made them serve, was with rigor. In other words, they are not only making them slaves, but they are mistreating them. Now the king of Egypt spake to the Hebrew midwives, of which the name of the one was Shephara, and the name of the other, Pua. I was very much interested to see the meaning of these two women. And the name of the first is Beauty, And the name of the second one, Splendor. Splendor and Beauty. Have you ever noticed the silhouette pictures of Egyptians? Do these two names here grab you, my friend, when you think of those silhouettes and the pictures of the Egyptian women? Beauty and Splendor. That is the thing that characterized the women in the land of Egypt. And these two apparently were women that are in official positions, a high position, and they had charge. In fact, they're the head of the nurses in the land of Egypt. They are the ones that would have charge in bringing the little ones into the world. Verse 16, now this is the king of Egypt, or the Pharaoh speaking. He said, "...when ye do the office of a midwife to the Hebrew women..." And see them upon the stools. If it be a son, then ye shall kill him. But if it be a daughter, then ye shall live. Now, this is another attempt of Satan to destroy the line that's leading to the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, friends, you're going to find that this goes all the way through the Bible, the Old Testament, right into the New Testament. 
you will find out that several attempts were made to destroy them, to exterminate them. And it's quite interesting the way that anti-Semitism has spread throughout the world. It's something that you don't seem to be able to kill it out. It's satanic in its origin, and therefore no child of God today, no Christian could possibly have any part in anti-Semitism. And it's generally the godless that have persecuted them and the non-Christian. Now, I know someone's going to say during the Dark Ages the church engaged in it. Yes, but it was the Dark Ages, you remember. They were very far from the Word of God. There was a great deal in externalities in religion. My firm conviction is that no person can study the Word of God and become anti-Semitic. This is a satanic attempt to get rid of the children of Israel.